Hey friends, how are you all doing today? So I've been on a kick lately, if you've been following me. Um, this is July 2022, and for those who watch in the replays or later on, um, I've been on a kick of painting small paintings. They sell well, they're affordable, um, and they're fun. They're fun. And so I haven't painted some Black Eyed Susans in a while. So I got this photo from Unsplash. I'll link it in this video's description. And let's get started. Hey friends, I'm using, oh, and I just dropped it, Ultramarine Blue Green Shade. It's a more purple blue that I have here in the studio than some of my other blues. And because we're painting yellow flowers, I want to maybe hint more at purples. Because it complements, if you want a juicy, bright color painting, um, compliments can help you get there. All right, so ultra, Ultramarine Blue Green Shade. If you have red shade, if you have any other blue, totally use it. It'll work great. I mixed it with some neutral gray five to help tone it down, make it softer, push it more into the background. Um, sometimes I worry that it's gonna look like rain. It might, it might be a little too soft. We'll know better when we get the flowers on there. So neutral gray five is right there. I have it in the basics. Uh, that filled in white box means that it's opaque. It's not transparent. You can't see through it. What does the ultramarine have on it? I don't always know. It depends sometimes both between, sometimes the liquid tech or the basics and the heavy body are even different in transparency. Oh yeah, this is transparent. It has an open box. And then titanium white. I used it in the basics. Um, I'm pretty sure that black box is solid. Yeah, it's opaque. And I would bet it's opaque in the heavy body too. Yes. <laughs> Just in case you wonder what some of that's for. Okay. What else? Oh, don't I used a uh, one inch. I think that's a one inch. Yep. Filbert from Royal and Lane Nickel. Love your brushes, Royal and Lane Nickel. I still have the tag on it. Just, you could use any brush. I just wanted to use a bigger one. And see, I've got like a brush mark there. Yeah, you can see that. Don't worry about it. I've got one there too. And then here I've got almost dry brushing, but I think that's kind of nice and it's probably going to get covered up anyway. I'm going to put flowers all over the top of this. And then I just went darker down here because it's going to help weight my painting. It'll help me with the grasses as I start to build them up. Um, you could just go lighter. That would be totally fine too. I think we'll stick with kind of primary colors. So while I'm chatting here before I go back to the time lapse, I'm going to put out I'm going to put out quinacridone magenta, but I'm almost out of the heavy body. I think I might go to my basics because it is, it is less expensive. But there's this is one where I think the opacity changes. So this is semi-transparent, and this is completely transparent. So if that is something that bothers you, you want to kind of pay attention on the tubes of paint. I think we'll go with the semi-transparent in the basics. Where do I want to put it? Can you see most of my palette? I think I'll put it over here because I'm going to make a purple. And then I'm going to use Cad Yellow Medium Hue. It's semi-transparent and I go through a lot of it, so I buy it in the bigger tube. Okay guys, I'm going to go wash out my brush and I'll be back after a bit.
hey guys, I thought I'd pop in. So sometimes I put on these fat grasses first because this is similar to this painting. This is one I've done recently. And sometimes I put, uh, this time I put the flower in, a couple of the main players of the flowers in first. I think I'll put in more flowers in this and kind of get a feel for where they're going to be in space. Um, I used a General's charcoal pencil. I also used a white charcoal pencil, but it wasn't showing up. So then I grabbed a yellow chalk pastel. This one happens to be Blick from Blick Art Materials. Um, I have a link in this video description to um, Hippie Crafter. They're really, re uh, sorry, Hippie Crafter chalk pastels. They're really reasonable price and they're a little bit harder like this. So they don't leave as much dust. So I like that about them. Um, and I'm just, I mixed primary colors. This could go red. I left it more orange. I mixed yellow and quinacridone magenta. Um, I mixed kind of a a red purple. I was going to call it violet, but I didn't know if that was quite the right color. A red purple rather than a blue purple with a quinacridone magenta and the ultramarine blue. And then I took my muted blue and made a green. It makes a really nice green for grasses. Muted green. Um, you could use Hooker's green. I would still mute it down. You can see this is bluer, even in the tube, than this yellow green. Um, that's okay, just add more yellow to it. Um, sometimes greens can be hard. That's why I'm saying that. Sometimes greens can be hard. It's good. I find it's good for me to mix a green and kind of make a muddy. Um, a little yellow and black can make a good green too. Oh, and I put out Mars Black because I realized I hadn't. Here's Mars Black. Okay. And I'm, these are kind of fat, so I'm thinking I'm going to want some skinnier ones in here. I'm using a half inch flat brush from Michaels. And then as my paint dries, it pops, and sometimes I don't like that, and sometimes I'm okay with it. It kind of looks like dry brushing. So I just happen to see that while I'm chatting with you guys. Oh, and then, something I do quite a bit, I'm trying to decide how high my grasses are going to come up. Um, I thought I was going to have them come up higher because they come up almost like in the reference photo. They kind of come up to here, but I don't know if I'm going to. I tend to fall back into things I, I like, you know, everybody does that. And oh, I know what I'm, I want to do. I, I want to put s some juicy color on this third. So if this is about half, right here is about half. I kind of want it over here, just to, so it's not in the center. But sometimes you have to wait for it to dry too to come back. And then I'm and then I'm wondering like, do I want to leave that sky hole? But I've got some sky color. I can always come back and paint it back in. So I just kind of swipe at it and layers. This is already almost like this is drying really quick t today in my studio. So this is almost like another layer. I'm cleaning off my brush and I'm going to put in, I don't know if I can get away with this, but I probably can because it's going to make a red if it mixes on the canvas. Just kind of have my juicy color in this area. That's all I'm thinking. And then vary, I want to vary the color and I'll probably throw, if it gets covered up, I'll come back and throw in some orange over here to warm it up a little bit. I, I do that quite a bit. But what's different is that I put on the flowers in the centers first. But that can actually maybe be, I was wondering if that might be easier for you guys. Because then you can kind of aim your grasses around it. Where sometimes I'll just put in some grasses and I'll put in flowers. Then I always come back with more grasses. Okay. Hope those comments help. I'll be back in a bit.
Hey, I thought I'd pop in. Hopefully the fans are too loud. I left them running out in the hallway. Um, the layers are helping. You can start to see it come, come alive. It's building up. Um, I crisscross them. I will put some more grasses back over a couple of the flowers. I think that looks nice. Here. Can you see this all on? Oh, yeah. If I hold it down, you know, just have some kind of wiggling up. Um, I really like the bees. And so I've simplified my bees. And so I thought I'd pop in and show you what I do. So I drew a little, little oval with um, chalk pastel or um, charcoal pencil. This guy. Use whatever you want. Um, I don't really like pencil because it doesn't absorb into the paint, but you can use pencil if you want. And so I've got like almost like a little point round, it's a little smaller oval down there. And then I take some white and it's almost a triangle shape that bends, like a little letter C. Here, if I hold it that way, it's almost like a little letter C. And I decided to put it here because it's the black, the black and yellow is going to be strong. And this is the star of my show. It's the biggest flower. And that's also where I have the juicy color. So I'm just going to take a little here. <clears throat> Excuse me. When I look down and talk, it kind of makes my throat. It's kind of funny. I have to look up and talk. <laughs> Seems like a no brainer thing to do. Make a little gray. And this is just a little liner brush. I don't know the number. It's um, something over zero. It's Royal and Lane Nichols Menta line. Okay, and then I've got a little water on there I need to wipe off. And I'm just gonna put some gray. Gosh, I don't know if I can do this. There we go. Sometimes the angle helps. And then telling yourself, if it doesn't work, I can wipe it off or I can paint over it. Really, I could have went with a little lighter gray. I'll grab a little white. It's probably going to be too much white. And then I'm going to wipe off my brush. So I'm just going to build up the colors on my bee too, also. I need to turn it. And then when it dries, I can wipe away the chalk pastel or the charcoal. I'm just kind of pushing at it because I can't really see it through my phone and my glasses. <laughs> I think that's pretty good. Oh, and that's okay. I got like a little blob, but we can put a couple more little, like going into, to make it, whoops, oh, that's too many, to make it fuzzy looking. But that's how I start my bees. I thought you guys might like to see that. Okay guys, I'm gonna paint some more and I'll be back in a bit. Hey, I just dried it with a hair dryer. I didn't, I didn't show that in the time lapse. And I thought I would finish the bee. I'll grab a little bit of this light yellow. Here, it's so little. You just kind of dab at it.
And it's okay if it goes over the black because it's really not going to show. Actually, I probably should have painted the black first. I'm going to grab some straight up yellow. Ah! Just bumped my hand. Hang on a second, guys. I'll make sure my brush is clean. Okay, I'm going to grab some straight up yellow. Just kind of dab at it. I don't know if I needed that light yellow first. Sometimes you don't know, you just paint and see how it looks. I'm going to grab some orange and wipe off the water on my brush. Oops, hopefully that's in frame. Oh, and I'm getting water. Let's try that again. So what you should do, so a lot of times I wipe it on my apron. After you wash your brush, wipe off, wipe the water off when you stick it in the, in the jar. I still got water. There. I think that turned out pretty. And then I ended up just kind of putting blobs, like almost like they're leaves or something. Took this. Oh, here, let's talk about what I'm thinking of the brushes I was using. So I ended up using a number 10 Filbert. Um, Zhu Ting is the brand. I got them on Amazon. They're really inexpensive. Um, I, I did use this brush too, the half inch. And then I went down in size to like a quarter inch craft flat brush from Michaels. It's called Craft Smart. Just because you'll get a little skinnier line, maybe a little more control. And then I also used a number one round Simply Simmons. But like, look at this one, it's messy, it wiggles. I think that's actually nice. Okay, back to the beat. I'm gonna grab a little black. I think these are just fun to do. I need to do something different, but I enjoy these so much. I'm just gonna play with them. I hope that's in camera and frame. So if you wanna leave a little eye, you can kinda just dab around and leave there. Stop. <laughs> Can you see that? I don't know if you can even see that. I'll even leave a little eye sometimes. And on that, I'm just going to put a little black on the bottom and leave the top light gray. And then you can try. Grab some water. This is a pretty dark gray. I'm going to have to lay this one down, guys, to do it. And I'm just going to pull one leg. I think they have six legs. I need to Google it, but when they're this little, you really don't, and you really don't probably need an antenna. But I'm gonna throw, throw a couple on, because that'll say B to people. And when that dries, we'll put, a lot of times I forget the wings, so I gotta wait for it to dry. Okay, the other thing, so I was playing with values. I had kind of a creamy muted yellow. Um, when I originally was making the petals, wasn't sure if I liked it, and I kind of went up and down in value, added some oranges and browns. Um, I like the quinacridone, straight up quinacridone magenta on there, that's nice. I put some orange, but it's so transparent that it doesn't show. Maybe I'll just kind of squiggle a little more on there. I don't know that it needs anything, you know? My son's over here. I kind of tucked it behind all the things. <laughs> I have lots of things. Um, I'm hoping by putting this on masking tape rolls and bringing it up higher, it's a little easier to see and a little better focus. Use what you need to when you're painting. And I'm thinking, okay, a lot of artists would say don't add white. But I'm wondering if we might like just like a little, let me just smear it. Just a little more. I like. I'm, I'm always kind of trying to go for a little more contrast, a little more oomph in my paintings. I, I like to really stretch the values. That'll make that more of the star of the show. We could also, because these have like a little. Oh, I closed my iPad. They have like little nubby, lumpy, bumpy um, centers. Could do that. I'll make those two come forward. 
And that makes me wonder, you can overdo it, but you can also fix it. Kind of pull this petal out a little bit. I'm just kind of brushing out some white. Okay guys, I think we're done. We could keep going, but I think we're done. And then like the skipping or like where the, the canvas shows doesn't bother me as much once I get some layers of paint on and the layers also I think make it look a little juicier, a little nicer. And then I'll put a gel gloss isolation layer on this tomorrow. It'll be dry enough. Um, let that dry for a day or two and then I'll put a satin varnish on it and I think that even makes it look a little deeper in color. I'm not sure I like that right there. I don't know if I want to make it brown or orange. There, I think I like that better. Personal preference, totally. And then I like that I pulled, like I made a light purpley pink, pulled that over, pulled this green over, took this one between the petals, pulled that one over. I think it gives it more depth. Okay, I need to sign it. I think I'll sign it. I usually sign it in either corner. I think I'll sign it like right here. And we'll just use like this light green color. I was signing it so it really blends in, but then when I photographic, photographic it shows up, but then, um, but it's much more subtle because every time you, it's like a Xerox of a Xerox. You guys remember doing that? You kept the original, so you got good Xerox copies. <laughs> I just dated myself. Um, I lose a little, so then like, and then when I make a, I have a print made, you lose a little. So I'm gonna make my signature a little more contrasty. So I just do my initials on the front, which is A. Let's make that a little longer. I think I need a little water, it's not flowing. And the thinner the paint is, it'll dry, the darker it'll dry, because it's more transparent. And then one dot for favorite son, and one dot for favorite daughter. Oh, so. A for my first name and then that kind of makes a T for my last name Tro and then once that's all dry I sign the back of all my paintings in case you get one that's framed they're all signed I use a um, oh shoot Posca pen it's an acrylic paint pen okay guys what do you think it's juicy colors I love it it's fun to kind of paint both muted and out of the tube. Here, maybe you want a screenshot. I haven't done a lot of that. Get a little closer. Oh, and I got a little quieter. It's just fun. I like it. I gotta, I need to find another painting. But well, no, I don't. Painting is supposed to be fun. And if it doesn't work out, these canvas, oh, this is a six by six inch canvas panel from Michaels. It might be a dollar. I mean, I could, could throw it in the trash. I could paint over it. You know, no pressure. Okay, guys, I super appreciate all your support. People have been sharing my videos in other painting groups. I can't thank you guys enough. People have been sending money through PayPal to support the channel. They've been doing super things. They come to the lives. You, I, it's just amazing. You guys have um, helped me so much just with your friendship and um I learned from you guys. I learned so much. You guys have great tips and ideas. Okay, enough gratitude. I just can't tell you how much I appreciate you all. Great, big, happy art hugs, and I hope to chat with you soon. Bye, guys.